I suffer from being self-demanding and self-criticism. And that basically just means that I set really high standards for myself constantly to a very unhealthy level. Being self-demanding, I think that it kind of sounds good. You set really good standards for yourself. You want to push yourself to do the best that you possibly can. And that sounds great, but it's not so much. So where do these expectations come from? Uh, yes, they are expectations set by yourself, and that's why it's called being self-demanding. Uh, but they can be influenced by your external environment, so usually three different areas. So they can be influenced by culture, which is mostly about the people that surround you, your religion, your values, all of that. Then there are familial expectations, which I will touch on a bit after because that's the one I believed I had. And then there are also professional expectations, which is depending on your career, the expectations that are set for you to continue in that career path, what you have to do to reach your goals inside that career path. Since I was little, I always thought that these expectations came from my parents. And it is true that in a way they do influence them because they always want me to become the best I possibly can, you know? Always go that extra step and keep on improving. But these expectations have always been set by myself, thinking that it was my parents' pressure putting on me to perform my best, when in reality, it was mostly because of me. Cuando empezaste a hablar, las primeras palabras suelen ser mamá, papá, agua. Yo creo que tu quinta palabra era yo sola, yo sola, no, yo sola, yo sola. Querías comer sola, querías coger las cosas sola, querías construir sola. Entonces siempre los padres pues están ahí apoyando, pero era no, yo sola. Era, o sea, siempre desde pequeñas tenía esta personalidad eh, en la que querías nuevos retos e intentar hacerlos, siempre y con tu personalidad que se ha, se ha demostrado desde pequeña, que las ha florecido desde pequeña, de querer avanzar, pues unidas las dos cosas ha hecho que te desarrolles siempre con esa inquietud de querer hacer cosas que a lo mejor no correspondían con tu edad. And one of the moments that triggered it was actually in class with José Miguel. He appeared in my video impatience where I'm not sure what we were talking about. I think it was about failure. And I commented my opinion where I stood in the fact that I didn't feel very comfortable with failure. And I gave some examples. Honestly, I don't really remember what I said, but when I finished talking, he said, well, that's what it's called being self-demanding. And this was actually the first time I heard this term being self-demanding. I knew about perfectionism before, but I never really identified much as a perfectionist. I think that perfectionists really seek for details, which I do 100% as well, but they really seek for details in what they're doing at the moment. Uh, they might look into the future as well, but they go hand in hand, but I think self-demanding goes a bit more beyond that, not just what you're doing at the moment, but what is next, you know? Self-demanding is setting a goal for you, and once you've accomplished it, setting another one, and so on and so forth. But it was the first time I heard that word, and just things started to click. Eras tan sumamente meticulosa en todo lo que hacías, y tan perfeccionista, que podías tardar lo que fuese. Pero a ti tenía que salirte perfecto. ¿Por qué? Porque seguías exactamente las reglas. Que... I think it all ties back to the reason that we're living in a fast-paced world and there's a very performance-driven culture. And to some people that can affect them more than others. Like in my case, for me, I need to perform, to constantly perform, constantly outperform what was expected from me. What can sometimes end up happening is we start equating our value with what we produce, what we do. So it becomes like, I am what I do. And that sort of, I am what I do, instead of I am enough, I am who I am. 
um, can can really get confusing. And, and therefore, when we fall short of what we, how we want to see ourselves, it has an immediate effect on our sense of self-worth, right? There's something that's really at stake. You know, if I can't do this, then, then um, I am not good enough. Not my work wasn't the best that it could have been. I think we fixate on past achievements and say, okay, now that I was able to reach this goal, it becomes a standard and it doesn't become celebratory if you reach it again. In my case, for example, I knew that I excelled academically. And so I fixated on that achievement and made it a standard of mine. So for example, if I got an eight, which is technically a very good grade, for me, it would feel a bit of like a failure because I was used to getting much higher grades. So being self-demanding can become very complicated when you constantly push yourself to a limit that you'd never reached before. And what can end up happening is instead of us feeling better and better as our achievement, achievements progress, what we see maybe is the difference between what we wanted and what we actually got and instead end up feeling worse. So the problem for self-demanding people comes when we don't reach that goal or throughout the process we don't feel as if we're gonna reach that goal because there's that expectation gap with what we had expected for, of ourselves and where we are at the moment. And that's where the self-criticism kicks in. When we don't reach that goal, it's because we do have a bit of that perfectionism and we're very detail-oriented. Any mistake we take as failure. And that's where we criticize ourselves for not achieving that goal and not achieving those standards and expectations that we had. We feel a lot of shame and disappointment and because those standards are so built up in our head, it's very hard for us to really analyze the circumstances and understand why that mistake could have happened or just take it as a learning process. It becomes a lot harder for us. I think that the first step to try to improve yourself with this and not have as many negative psychological effects is awareness. I think that once you're aware, it's much easier for you to restructure your thoughts into a more positive outlook into the situation as to why you might have committed that mistake or not reached that goal. I think that it's also very important that we look at everything from an objective perspective because when we're not reaching those goals, we tend to really put a lot of the blame on ourselves when we shouldn't. Sometimes we have to contradict our ideas, see their circumstances that surround us, whether it was really a mistake or not, and just look at it from a learning perspective. We're all gonna commit mistakes and that's how we learn. What are the other parts of my life um, that, um, in which I demonstrate value, not just what I do? Do I make people laugh? Am I caring? Do I cook you know, with love? And then my own personal tip, which I think is probably one of the most important ones, is slow down. I'm going to allow myself time to regenerate and to refresh rather than just going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing without stopping to recover and expecting that I'm just going to be able to perform the same without any limits because that's inhuman. And something that is also very important is reevaluate your goals. The world is constantly changing and I've said it in I think all of my videos but but it's constantly changing and so should your goals. If you see that there's a whole pandemic and you had this one goal in mind, then evaluate their circumstance and see that that goal maybe is not right for the moment. Don't feel so bad for not being able to achieve it. So change your goals every once in a while, contradict them, see if they're valuable for you at all and don't push yourself so hard.